Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Wednesday, September 6th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. What kinds of risks do new artificial intelligence tools create? Could they lead to the extinction of humanity? Or simply upend our daily lives as we know it? Among those warning about the threats of annihilation are some top AI executives, like Sam Altman and Elon Musk, who some say could benefit from the hype generated by discussing these dangers. And figuring out which of these risks to deal with now is the subject of increasing debate, leaving the rest of us to wonder, how concerned should we be? Here to discuss this is our AI reporter, Deepa Sitharaman. So Deepa, who are these people who are warning about the extinction risk to humanity? So the group of people on the extinction risk side, the ones who are particularly worried about the world ending as a result of some kind of interaction with an advanced AI system, among them, there are a lot of pretty serious researchers like Jeff Hinton and Yashua Bengio, who are not household names, but they won a Turing Award for their work on AI. But They now believe that the situation they've helped create and the technology they built is rapidly getting us to a place where we could be harmed as a species. Tell us a little more about that. I mean, how do you go from a tool like ChatGPT writing you a a poem in the voice of Dr. Seuss to something that could potentially wipe out the species? So just to be clear, it's not ChatGPT that's going to kill us. That's good to know. That is very good to know. The thinking here is it's a couple of steps away from where we are now. And this is all speculation at the moment. There isn't any science to back up any of these theories. One way that it could kill us is if we rapidly introduce more and more AI into all sectors of the economy, and suddenly something goes wrong. The AI just makes a mistake that any of these systems can do, but it has a pretty wide-reaching effect because we rely so much on these AI systems that we don't catch the error. There's another version of this where we give the AI system a very clear directive, such as go solve climate change. And what winds up happening is that the system creates a bunch of sub goals. And one of those goals is detrimental to our survival as a species. And then there's this broader idea that as you build these systems to be smarter and smarter and smarter, eventually they will decide they don't need us. And that's the rogue AI theory. What are some of the skeptics saying about the possibility of those extreme risks and maybe some of the more near-term risks that they identify as being the thing that we should focus on? Well, Yashua Bengio and Jeff Hinton won the Turing Award with Jan LeCun, who is very much on the other side of the spectrum and really believes that the entire notion of AI existential risk is far too overblown and a science fiction scenario. There are a lot of other risks that people who are skeptical of the companies and skeptical of AI worry about a lot more. These are things like the deployment of these systems to set mortgage rates. You can see a scenario where if you have an AI system do that based on historical data, What you can do is you can entrench biases. So you can have a scenario where underprivileged or marginalized people are suddenly seeing higher mortgage rates than everybody else. They also are worried about what these systems produce. There's been some research that shows that if you show me a doctor in any of these image generating systems, it's almost always a man. And that's something that some of these systems have had to correct, but remains a major problem. Does either group have solutions or even proposals about reducing the risks that they see as being really pressing? On the existential risk side, it is about the idea called alignment. So how do we build these systems so that they act in ways that comport with our goals and our desires? And on the 
more sort of near-term risk side, there is a lot of push on things like transparency. Right now, you don't know what kind of training data any of these larger systems are trained on because they keep that pretty close. And there is a big argument in this field that you could look at the training data and start to assess the risks better if you have access to that information. For somebody who's listening to this, who's hearing maybe there's this really devastating risk to humanity or possibly just these more near-term risks to our livelihoods, how we go about our daily lives, how concerned should everyday people be about the development of AI and, I guess, the speedy development of AI? What all these researchers are saying, and I will say this is the one unifying note, is there is cause for concern. Either this affects us today or the world eventually collapses, right? So there's a sense that you need to be worried about something from all these different researchers that I talk to. Okay, so not leaving anybody with a sigh of relief, but something to be on guard about. Sorry about that. No, no, (laughs) I didn't get any sigh of relief. (laughs) All right, that was our reporter, Deepa Sitha Raman. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Anthony Bancy with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.